Well, good morning, Trinity. It is good to see you all. Pastor Mark here with another congregational update. Summer worship has been a great joy. Wednesday nights, we've been walking through the stories of the Old Testament. We've been using campfire type songs and the gift has been some young people that have gotten up to help us with the uh, leading of the singing and doing the action. So a lot of fun as we've done that out at the Peace Chapel. This past Wednesday night, our text uh, was from Genesis 3, looking at the story of temptation. Now, you know the story well, but let me share just a couple of uh, verses as part of this opening devotion for our time together. Now, the serpent was more crafty than any other wild animal that the Lord God had made. You know, in that story, the serpent comes slithering into the midst of human beings, and the question is, um, can you eat of any tree in the garden? And the serpent ends up telling Eve, God doesn't want you to eat that because then you will be just like God. Isn't that the way temptation works, that it comes slithering into our midst when we're least expecting it? I'm sure that Eve wasn't on the lookout at all, and pretty soon, we take on the role of God, sliding into place that we don't belong, putting ourselves in the center of the world, the center of attention, and the center, well, the center is God's place in our lives when everything is right and as it should be. But when we put ourselves at the center of the universe, Really, it is a process where we begin to curve in on ourselves. That is um, really a definition of sin, to curve in on oneself. And the more you curve in, you roll into a fetal position and pretty soon you can't see anything above you, below you, beyond you. The only thing you can see is your own belly button. You become physically the center of your own universe. Well, you know how the story unfolds. God comes knocking, finds Adam and Eve, understands that they have eaten the fruit of the tree that they weren't supposed to. God tells them there are going to be consequences. Snake, you're going to be eating dust the rest of your life. Eve, women are going to have pain in childbirth. Adam, you're going to toil. To pull any food from the land, you are going to toil. But just when you think that God might throw up God's hands at what humans had done there in the garden, just when you think that God might turn around and just walk away, God does something incredibly filled with grace. God takes skins and fashions it into clothing and provides it for Adam and Eve. God takes care of protecting them. And that's the story of God in our lives, a story of incredible grace, continuously forgiving our sins. Well, let me share a couple of updates from the congregation. Well, council met last evening. A lot of business on the agenda. We had a great conversation with Carla from the banquet as she and the banquet begin to try to wonder how do they reopen. Now the banquet has been serving all through COVID-19. They've done it with to-go meals and they have served a lot of people. So it's an incredibly important ministry. But Carla has put together um, some procedures that maybe come September or so, they may begin opening up, um, limiting the number of people down in the fellowship area, um, limiting the number of people at each table, being very careful uh, to make sure that things are done well. It was a great conversation with Carla because this is a mutual relationship and trying to figure out how to best serve people. 
We also talked just a little bit about what it might look like for Trinity to become an internship congregation for uh, someone who is studying to be a pastor. Uh, we may have more information for you on that in the coming week. We talked about congregational finances. And again, a word of thanks uh, to all of the members of this congregation and the incredible generosity. Uh, the finances for May show that our giving was down a little bit, um, probably about $2,500 from normal. The other thing, though, that was really down for the month of May uh, and has been in the midst of COVID-19 is rental income that comes into the congregation. So all told, um, our expenses were $8,000 more than our income. Year to date, uh, we are still ahead income versus expenses, um, but we're also heading into the tight summertime. So we'll watch that closely, but you also need to know how important it is for the sake of the ministry that happens in this place that people continue to give their offering because people are fed, not only with food through the banquet, but by the word through gospel, and it, and it is just so important. We also began hearing about some issues with the facility um, some issues that deal with windows, some issues that are happening with the heating system. Uh, we'll be sharing more about that with you in about a month or so as well. So other things that are going on, Grace has been working really hard. Uh, all members of the congregation received a document that asks that you would share updated contact information. One of the things that we learned in a process of trying to call every member of the congregation in the midst of COVID-19 was we've got a lot of people who we don't have contact information for. Um, my guess is people have walked away from their landlines, which a lot of us have done, including me, um, but haven't given us cell phone numbers. So we don't, we don't have ways to get a hold of people. We don't have um, email addresses for a lot of people. And, you know, we learned in this time of crisis, it's really crucial to be able to reach out uh, and connect with people. So Gracia is kind of leading at this point in effort uh, to get that pulled together. If you haven't filled out that form and shared it back with us, we'd really appreciate it if you would. There's a document available on the website as well to make it happen. Uh, and Jan's been involved in that process as well. We're kind of excited to let you know that um, we've told you that we posted a part-time temporary position for a congregational relationship coordinator. Uh, we filled that position this week. Uh, we interviewed three exceptional candidates. Any of them uh, would have been a gift to the congregation. Um, Heather Bauman has accepted the position. Heather uh, is originally from Beach, North Dakota, grew up at First Lutheran there, uh, has been in Bismarck for a number of years, has worked at another congregation in a, in a welcoming coordinator capacity um, and uh, brings some phenomenal gifts in the ability to train. She's also um, been a substitute teacher and has been president of a PTO, so lots of organizational skills as well that she'll be able to share with the congregation. Next week, I'm going to be away at some continuing ed. Well, I'm not really away. One of the gifts of this COVID-19 is exceptional um, continuing education opportunities where you can sit at your computer and engage them. But that will mean that I'm not going to be able to do a congregational update unless something um, really remarkable happens that I uh, need to share with you. And then I'm going to take uh, some vacation time. So it'll be a few weeks before we'll post a congregational update again. That's kind of the news from Trinity. Thank you so much. God bless on your day.